Hello and welcome to the world of building design. My name is Babak, your host. Uh, this is Revit MEP tutorial number 12. Um, in this tutorial, I would like to show you how to create a new plumbing plan. So this is going to be a plumbing tutorial. Um, so we're going to create a new plumbing um, plan and uh, start doing some setup for the plumbing plan. So uh, now we want to create a new file. So we go into the new in the template of the Revit MEP. Once we are in the new, we want to select a plumbing selection from our tab. So since we don't have a plumbing selection for the template, we go to browse. And then in the browse, because we started to draft everything in the metric uh, unit, I'm going to select the mechanical, um, sorry, the uh, plumbing default metric. So plumbing default metric is what we're going to select and then press OK, open. And then once we are here in the create new project, I go OK. So once we are in the plumbing template, we are basically going to kind of repeat the same process that we have done in the previous tutorial because uh, in fact the, the process for setting up your new plan, whether it's a mechanical, is HVAC, or plumbing or other, other templates would be the same procedure. So in order to do that and we start uh, any of our plumbing work, we have, to, we have to link our plan to a architectural model. So I'm going to connect my architectural model to this uh, plumbing template. Uh, so I'm going to bring my architectural template from my directory. So I'm going to link. So I go to insert tab on the top and then go to link Revit. Now I'm going to find my Revit uh, architectural model so, and bring it in here. So I'm going to select my architectural model and make sure that the positioning would be auto origin to origin. Go open. And then I have my architectural plan insert into my plumbing plan. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this architectural plan so that once we develop the piping or add fixtures or other plumbing components to our architectural plan. We don't want our architectural plan to move or create a problem with our uh, modeling. So uh, in order to do that, I'm just left clicking on my architectural plan. Once it's selected, I go to this button that is called pin. I press on pin button and now the pin button is activated and you see this little uh, circle in here, it shows that uh, this architectural plan is pinned so it doesn't move. And once you do that, definitely make sure that you create the room boundaries or enable the room boundaries by going to edit type for, for our link architectural plan. Uh, and once you start that, on the room bounding or room boundary, make sure that this is checked marked. This makes sure that the Revit understand the boundary of the room um, walls and doors so that when you create spaces, uh, you can uh, create individual spaces uh, allocated to every room. So then now go apply and then we go OK. So we have started this. The next step would be, as you remember from the other tutorial in the number one tutorial for Revit MEP, we want to make sure that our plumbing level are in the same alignment with our architectural level. So what we have to do is go back to our one of our elevation, doesn't matter which elevation you go, but in the project browser on the left hand side, you can see that we have east, north, south, west elevation. I'm going to pick east plumbing elevation, double click on that. And then once I see my elevation, I come here and look at the elevation. So all you see on the right hand side, these are all architectural elevation that comes with the Revit uh, model, architectural model once it's insert into our model. 
you see you can't change any of these levels but what I want to do is to find my plumbing levels you see this plum this levels created here is the default levels that that come to this model once we create a plumbing plan so these are basically our plumbing uh, plumbing levels so what I want to do is I'm going to I'm going to left click on our plumbing level 2 doesn't matter which one you want to select but I select 2 because the level 2 is in, in alignment with the level 2 of architectural and once you select you see there's a little circle comes up I want to left click and hold the click button on this uh, round circle I drag it outside of this plan and release the left click button and escape so once I move around this level you see it's highlighted it means that we can modify this so this is our plumbing level 2 I want to make it the same as my level 2 of architectural so I'm going to use the command align you can go up on the tab and select it from up there or you can do use a shortcut by just typing al as align command and you see there's a cursor um, button changed to align so now we want to select our destination of the alignment first which is our level 2 architectural so I'm going to select this which is our architectural level I left click on that and then I go to my plumbing level 2 and then I left click on that so my level 2 plumbing is now in alignment with my architectural level and uh, level 1 is already in the same alignment so I'm not going to change that I just escape so we are good with the alignment we can create other levels uh, as we wish to I, I don't want to create other levels for plumbing right now because we don't we don't draft any plumbing work in other levels our focus would be the first floor plumbing uh, you know drafting and plumbing modeling in the first floor so for you to add others it's very simple you just create copy of the same level 2 in your plumbing level and then copy on top of every of the single levels to create additional plumbing level now I go back to my plumbing floor plan level 1 from the left hand side I highlight it in here I double click I go back in here so I'm going to work on the ladies restroom uh, on the bottom here so what I want to do I want to create a you see once I I zoom in I see all this grid line I want to have a better idea of this area of the restroom so I'm going to create a call out as you remember we have to go up into annotative and then select the call out uh, let's find the okay this is not in the annotative I have to go to view and find the call out yeah this is call out is in here I select on the call out and then what I want to do I want to create a rectangle around my restroom here once everything is selected I click so I have this cut out in here but what I want to do is I want to change the the solid line cut out around the around this restroom so this is a new command that you're learning in this tutorial what I want to do I would go to manage button on the top and then go to object style once I press on the object style you see there are multiple tabs on the top the first one model object I don't want this I go to annotative object on the annotative object I come here and look for call out so if you see here we have a call out boundary I want to change the boundary from solid line into a dash line so so if you look at the other columns up here there are different things such as line color line pattern so let's go ahead and change the the color to say red for the boundary and also change the line from solid into say dash dot and then apply and then OK so you see I have changed my color on the callout line and I changed its 
representation style from the solid line into dash line. You can change anything else the same way that you want. So now let's go into the callout by double clicking on the section or callout uh, symbol. Double click. I come into my um, uh, you know, restroom uh, callout with a better view and uh, this is a very, very effective tool when you want to do more uh, detailed design and detail, detail drafting and modeling. And for that purpose, we also want to change our scale from 1 to 100 to a smaller scale so you can, you can do a more precise and more detailed um, you know, drafting and, um, and more modeling. So in order to do that, if you come in here on the left-hand side, you see all these um, you know, uh, scales are, are uh, off and you can't make any changes and that's because you have to change your um, template for, for here. So in order to do that, we go to, plumb, you see the plumbing callout property in here, you scroll down to find the template. You see the view template that we have is plumbing plan. You want to, we want to click on that and instead of a plumbing plan template, we want to go to none and then apply and then okay. Once we do that, we can enable, as you see, we can enable changing the, the scale of this callout space. So I'm going to go to 1 to 50 as opposed to 1 to 100. And now I have a better uh, view uh, for my mechanical or plumbing plan in here. Uh, so another thing I want to do is that I want to remove the grid line on the back as you can see, there's a grid line, which is um, something that you might not want to, to model with this condition. You can turn it on and off by using the visibility graphics uh, command. Visibility graphic commands can be found on the left-hand side in your property easily by just scrolling down, scrolling up. You have this command here as visibility graphics. Go to edit. Once you are in the edit, you can come down to your floor and go to this column called patterns and then you want to override just the pattern you don't want to turn off the floor completely you just want to override the pattern by going to override and then uncheck the foreground and background from here then we will have no i unchecked it go OK and then apply and then OK and you see we have no grid line as a as a background in our uh, floor plan in here. Another way of using the visibility graphics rather than going to property tab in here or property section of our view is by just typing the, 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 uh, the letters VG once you select these two letters or type it, that command comes up automatically. The, the visibility graphics comes on automatically. Just pay attention to the left-hand side bottom of the, the write-up here on the screen. I'm trying to, to, to type VG and see what happens. V, G, and then ready. All of a sudden, we have our, um, our uh, command box opens for the visibility graphics. So you can use either a short, short hotkey or you can go through the property to achieve that, uh, you know, that selection. So once I'm here, I can now select my space as an individual space. So to, to, to select your space, you go to Analyze tab, as you remember from previous tutorial, and um, you can go select space. Once you select the space, you see the, the red boundary line around the, the restroom area. This is because we have, we have selected the boundary uh, to be enabled. Remember, if I go here and just press on, the, on my architectural plan, you see when you go to edit type, you see the room bonding is checkmarked. You have to make sure this is checkmarked so that you can select your space. Going back, uh, again, I go to space, and then on the space, I can select this restroom and just left click to select as a space but because the space is just named space number one i want to change this to be 
similar to my room name that architectural plan defined it already once they developed the architectural plan they have they have named this as Lehman's uh, you know room with its own number so I'm gonna select or match my space name to the room name so to do that you go up space naming you select the space naming and you make sure the option is name and number basically the room name and number is going to be transferred to your space name and number basically you're going to have the same space uh, number and, and space name so I'm going to go OK and this is changed to women room number 105 so this is the way you start setting up your plumbing plan and uh, this is the end of this tutorial to prepare your plumbing plan in the next tutorial we're going to we're going to learn how to add some other components such as piping, some additional fixtures uh, to our plumbing plan. Thank you very much for watching this video. And uh, if you haven't subscribed in this channel so far, I definitely recommend you to go ahead and do that. And once you also activate the notification bell, uh, you will see the new tutorial as soon as they are posted. Thank you again for watching and see you in the next tutorial.